Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of a weekly spotlight series highlighting every single track in Mario Kart 8. Each week I'll be taking a look at a different cup and its four tracks, offering a few tips and tricks and thoughts on the design of the track, point out the different shortcuts available, and talk about some perhaps lesser known visual details and easter eggs. This week I'll be playing as Yoshi and exploring the flower cup. Let's jump in, shall we? We kick off this cup with Mario Circuit, a twisty, turny racetrack that is almost entirely anti-gravity. You'll have to put your drifting skills to the test to find victory here. Just look at the very first turn. You'll need to drift anyway to get the most out of this turn, but a line of coins following the center line of the track challenges you to maneuver while drifting to grab early coins and get a leg up on the competition. Also, watch out for Goombas. The track is almost entirely in anti-gravity, so don't fear collisions with other racers. Embrace them. You want to cut turns tight, but be wary about cutting them too tight, because several of the turns have piranha plants just waiting for you to drift into their range. Trust me, I know from experience. You can pick up a couple of great jump boosts off of the ramps halfway through the course. Not only that, they have coins, so you have extra incentive to nail those jumps. A gliding pad is present at the end of the track, and what's cool is that if you can stay high and maneuver over the Goomba Towers, you can hit the starting gate sign. Fun times. For those of you fond of green shells, this track is perfect for them. Lots of rails on the edges means you can get the most out of your bouncing missiles. Shortcuts here are simple. Cut the corners with mushrooms or a star. You'll likely need two mushrooms if you don't have a star, but cutting the turns lets you pass behind the piranha plants, giving you a great jump forward in the race. The music for this track rocks. Like Mario Stadium, it's an upbeat, energetic melody that perfectly fits the mood of a fast-paced race. The anti-gravity nature of the track means you can get some really fascinating views. Where the jump boosts are, you can look up and see the Mushroom Castle upside down above you, with toads jumping around on the tower. Later in the track, you can see toad houses from Mario 3D World up above you. I hope you don't suffer from motion sickness. Next up is Toad Harbor. This track is one of my favorites, and is quite notable for the fact that there are just so many different paths to take. Let's get into the perplexing layout of this racetrack. At the beginning, you can choose to cross a bridge with items or forego them for a narrow set of jumps that can give you a nice boost ahead. Just try not to fall in the water. Next up is a curving section where you can race along the top level, a canvasy canopy, or down below, weaving through wooden beams and traffic cones. The top path has a jump boost and a boost pad at the end, making it a slightly quicker route if you can stay on top. After that, you're once again faced with choices. You can go straight ahead and drift around a wide corner, or head up the ramp on the right side. Follow that narrow path to a jump over a gap, and you'll have a nice little shortcut to get you ahead. Climbing the hill, there are trolleys coming from around the corner. Many of these trolleys trail item boxes, but be careful about going for them. Hitting a trolley will make you spin out and lose precious time. You can race alongside the trolleys, or climb up onto the wall through anti-gravity hitting ramps and boosts to bypass the more dangerous path below. You can even use the jumps to bail out of the anti-grav section early, though it isn't exactly easy, and honestly, I can't tell if it's actually useful or not. Try it out for yourself and see what you think. Finally, heading down the very wide hill to the finish, you can stick to the straight path or take an early turn, drift around a corner and hit a boost pad for a speedier route. If you stick to the straightaway and have a mushroom, you have use of the only shortcut in this map. Boost across the grass while avoiding the trolleys, and you'll be seconds ahead of your competition. The music in this racetrack is delightfully guitar-focused. An acoustic guitar plucks and strums a cool rhythm, while an electric guitar comes in for a happy melody that perfectly fits a town, sorry, harbor, focused completely around the adorable little toads. There are a ton of visual easter eggs and cool sights in this track, you can spot sailboats in the water, and there are four different types. Mario, Yoshi, Wario, and Peach. Out on the water is also a giant peach statue, styled like the Statue of Liberty. That early section where you go through the town has a number of barrels, shipping crates, and traffic cones, driving home the idea that this is a port, 
where ships and merchandise move in and out frequently. Along the sides of the street, you can spot tons of signs for shops and restaurants, like this one, the Fountain Cafe. Take a look along the main streets and see how many different signs you can spot. Later on, there's a spinning sign for the Toad Toy Shop. I'd love to see what kinds of fun stuff they have there. And near the end is the Peach and Daisy Royal Patisserie. What the heck is a patisserie, you ask? Only the most amazing thing ever, a bakery. Ever wonder where the trolleys go when they're not on the racetrack? Well, you can find out. Look right from the first bridge and you'll see where the trolleys pass through when they're not on the racetrack. It looks like it would make for an awesome shortcut, but alas, you can't go back there. Trust me, I tried. Next up is Twisted Mansion and it earns its name. The entire course is twisting and turning, rolling and moving beneath you as you race through a haunted mansion. Right at the beginning you can pick to race left or right along an anti-grav wall section. And as it bounces beneath you, with good timing you can actually get jump boosts off of it. Drift around the next turn grabbing coins along the way and you'll find your way to another anti-gravity section, speeding underwater and onto another split in the road. I almost always take the left side of this split. Why? Because when you end this section, you'll come out of a waterfall. The right side path has your racer have to twist and right themselves, and I've found that it can sometimes throw off your trajectory and mess you up in getting where you want to land. You can land up here on the top or bottom section, and it seems like the top section is a little bit faster. Either way, you have another drift turn stocked with coins, so time it carefully. Finish off the race with an outdoors section, avoiding the suits of armor slamming down their hammers, and you're at the finish line. There are two notable shortcuts, both requiring a mushroom or a star. The first is immediately after the wall racing section. Hit a quick drift to your left and boost between some bookcases. This gives you a huge boost forward if you hit it properly, so take advantage of it whenever you have the means. The second shortcut is near the end, where you can boost along the grass to the right, bypassing the suits of armor completely. The creepy music fits the Haunted Mansion theme perfectly, and visually, the track obliges. Right at the start when Lakitsu starts counting down, watch as the giant door to the mansion slowly creaks open. Inside, you immediately see that the tables and chairs of the dining room are moving back and forth, with booze flying over them. After that, you learn something very interesting. Booze can read! Well, you don't actually see this one reading, but come on, why else would he be pacing in front of a bookshelf? The entrance into the underwater tunnel is super creepy! I mean, just look at that face. Does not look friendly to me. Underwater, you're faced with skeleton piranhas floating overhead. And at the end of the racetrack, those suits of armor smashing the ground? Yeah, they're manned by booze, who pop out of the helmets and laugh at you as they smash your vehicle. Such mischief makers. Leave the creepy mansion behind and say hello to the bright outdoors again with Shy Guy Falls. This is another favorite for me with a fantastic combination of challenge and amazing visual touches that make this racetrack exhilarating. Right from the start, you're hitting some very quick turns, drifting back and forth and grabbing coins if you can. Hit the boost pad at the end and turn again for a shocker. You're racing up a waterfall! Going up, there are boost pads coming at you that alternate left and right. With great timing, you can hit almost every single one blasting forward in the race. Drift around the corner at the top, and then you race down the waterfall again. The track widens a lot here, giving you tons of space to maneuver or to launch items at other racers. Hitting the gliding pad will send you soaring through the air, and you're faced with a decision. There's the wider, easier path down below, but there's also an interesting tunnel above. This is one of the most challenging paths to hit properly, at least for me. But if you can guide your car or bike into the top tunnel and not go through the grass, you can shave a few seconds off of your time and leave your fellow racers in the dust. Hit some jump boosts at the end while grabbing some coins and there's your lap. There's one shortcut in this track and it is very easy to miss, but extremely exciting to hit. You'll need a mushroom or a star, but even then, it isn't obvious where the shortcut is. So, where is it? Well, right after you land from gliding, look to the right after the tunnel. See those two rocks poking up? Boost between them and you'll bypass that entire turn, leaping forward in the race. One of my favorite shortcuts ever. 
The music in this track is frantic and exciting. And do you notice something? When you pass the Shy Guys who are at work, you'll actually hear them working, chanting and grunting with effort. It even fits the music. There are some really cool sights to see in this track, even beyond the whole racing up a waterfall thing. This first one, I actually just discovered for the first time while recording footage for this. During those quick turns, there's a great spot to stop, with butterflies flapping around. Looking past them, ah, oh, look at that beautiful view. It stretches on for forever. Right after that, you can spot a rainbow glistening in the air. How lovely. Heading up the waterfall, you can spot shy guys dangling over the edge, going the extra mile for their work effort. Talk about dedication. And when you look down from above, you can see a set of scaffolding with shy guys up and down it. Near the end of the track, there are two sections where you can see shy guys at work mining, riding in mine carts, and working a water wheel looking contraption. Pretty cool. Well, that's all for this week's Spotlight on Mario Kart 8. This week, the Flower Cup. Tune in next week when we take a look at the Star Cup. Until then, let me know in the comments what you thought, and thank you for watching.